Hello and welcome to my YouTube channel. Nice to have you with us. God bless everyone who just joined in. Please let me know if you can hear me. Give me a one if you can hear me, please. Welcome and God bless. Can you hear me? Is my sound loud and clear? Thank you. Thank you for the confirmation. I want to thank everyone who just joined in. Like I said before, today on this live broadcast, we'll have the opportunity to have a nice teaching together. We will put Muhammad to the test and see if this so-called prophet of Islam did actually break the Ten Commandments. And last but not least, when I finish my teaching, we'll have a nice Q&A session with our guests in the live chat either about Islam or today's mentioned topic. In other words, you can ask me questions about today's teaching and I will try to answer as far as I can. Uh, when we finish the teaching, we will allow also Muslims uh, to ask us questions. So please, if there will be any Muslims in the live chat, they are free to uh, also call me on my Skype ID, DROP Christian, when I finish the teaching of today. So, did Muhammad actually break the Ten Commandments? That's the teaching for today. Before we start, I want to pray with you so that God can guide us through this live broadcast today. So please pray with me in the name of Christ. Lord, thank you for your grace and because of the ultimate sacrifice of your beloved Son, we are saved. Thank you for your infinite love towards us, Lord. Lord, we are sinners. Please forgive our daily sins and thank you for the daily bread. Please, Lord, guide us so we can also forgive others who curse us or maybe persecute us because we are followers of your Holy Son, Jesus Christ. Lord, please give me the strength today when I'm weak and in need of your peace and comfort. Please, please give me this courage and wisdom today and always to overcome lies and deception, Lord. Help me not to lean on my own understanding but in everything acknowledge you, you so that you can direct my words, thoughts and actions. Lord, the devil is using deception and we know he desires to keep us from the truth. Lord, please don't allow him to win. Give us a measure of your strength so that we might not give into discouragement, deception and doubt. Please, Lord, please. Help us honor you in all our ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So, if you just joined in, guys, welcome and God bless. Don't forget to subscribe and smash that like button. Also, please click on the notification bell so you will get notified when I go live or upload videos. Now, did Muhammad actually break the Ten Commandments? Yes, he did. And today we are going to prove that to you. If you encounter some problems, guys, uh, with the quality, put the quality on 720p. So you will see uh, the best quality that I stream with. So don't forget to put your settings on 720p. So, as you see here in front of you, this is from the movie uh, of Moses. I think it was made in the 60s and it was actually a very beautiful video, uh, really beautiful long movie about Moses. How he got the Ten Commandments and how he was uh, even uh, almost, he became almost the pharaoh of Egypt. And then he killed a man and he had to flee. And then God came to him, appeared to him 
and commanded them to go and free the Israelites. And as you see here, uh, Moses is holding the Ten Commandments in his hand that God himself gave to Moses. Now what are the Ten Commandments, guys? I think everybody should know the Ten Commandments. And if you don't know, that's not a problem. We, we will go through them and see uh, if Muhammad actually did broke all the Ten Commandments. I think it's a good topic today to show our Christian uh, listeners and even if there are Muslims uh, to see if Muhammad is actually a prophet. I mean, a true prophet should not make uh, or follow different commandments that God did not give to Moses or break them. I mean, Muslims always claim that Muhammad is the biggest and the greatest prophet of them all and he is the final prophet, right? He is the seal of the prophet. Such an important uh, prophet should at least follow the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses because Muslims also have to believe uh, in Moses as one of the greatest prophets of Islam. So these are the Ten Commandments, guys. Let us go through them and see if Muhammad actually did pass any of them. <laughs> and we will go also to Islamic sources to back up our claims uh, to show you that Muhammad actually did break all 10 of them. So let us start with the first one. You shall have not, you shall have no other gods but me. Now did uh, Muhammad, the prophet of Islam, did he follow the God of the Holy Bible, of the Old Testament? Did he actually follow or did he worship the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob? No. Muhammad followed Allah, and Allah is not Yahweh or Jehovah, right? If we go to chapter 1 of the Quran, we can read the following. In the name of Allah, the entirely merciful, the especially merciful. Bismillahir Rahman Rahim. Well, Christians and Jews don't worship Allah. So what, uh, as you see, this is a different God, right? So here, Muhammad already broke the very first important first command. So <laughs> the start is already very bad for Muhammad, as you see, right? God of the Bible is I am that I am. And when Moses asked God who sent him, God in, the, in Exodus says, tell them that I am has sent you. So our God, his name is not Allah for sure. And <clears throat> if we go to the second commandment, you will let us read. You shall not make for yourself an idol, any idol, or no bow down to all or worship it. So here, the second commandment says, you should not make yourself an idol. And certainly not bow down and worship it. Now, did Muhammad actually worship any idols? That's the million dollar question. Actually, he did. He kissed and bowed down to the black stones. And he also gave the satanic verses to the pagan idols. To, sorry, pagan Quraysh, right? In Mecca. Do you remember the story from chapter 22, Ayah 52? Let us go there and prove to you that Muhammad actually gave the satanic verses to the pagan Quraysh of Mecca. And he actually committed shirk and bowed down with the pagan Quraysh. This is Tafsir of Asbab al-Nuzul by Al-Wahidi. Now Al-Wahidi is one of the earliest scholars and his Asbab al-Nuzul, the tafsir for the Quran, is very important in Islam, especially Sunni Islam. This is chapter 22, ayah 52. Now, if we go through the tafsir, you will see, read with me, 
the messenger of Allah recited Surah chapter 53 but when he reached have you thought upon Allah al Uzza wal Manad the three daughters of Allah before Islam the third the other the devil put on his tongue <laughs> so Muhammad was not protected from Allah but the devil put on his tongue what he had secretly wished and hoped for and said these are the mighty grains and their intercession is hoped for and in the Arabic is, it's, it is so these are three bird idols and they are called the mighty cranes and they used to intercede for the pagan Quraysh for the pagan Meccans because the Quraysh used to worship Allah before Islam so Allah was simply adopted by Muhammad right so the Quraysh they also worship the three bird idols, the daughters of Allah, the moon idol Allah. And those three bird idols used to carry and intercede the, for the pagans to the moon idol Allah, the supreme idol, right? Because he was the supreme god of the pagans, as you see. So these mighty cranes carried the prayers all the way to Jannah and give them to Allah. So they were bird idols. When the Quraysh, so when the Quraysh heard this, this what? When Muhammad gave them the satanic verses. And by the way, this part, guys, is the satanic verses. When they heard this, they were very pleased. So they were very pleased with Muhammad. And the Messenger of Allah carried and recited until the end of the surah and then prostrated. He did sujood. He bowed down and worshipped the three idols of the pagans. Allah al Uzza wal Mana the third. All the Muslims followed suit and prostrated. So even the Muslim prostrated, they did sujood, which is, which is shirk, right? And the idolaters, the pagan Meccans who were present, prostrated too. So as you see, so as you see, guys, the proof is in front of you. This is the tafsir, like I said, for chapter 22, ayah 52. Maybe the admin link of this tafsir uh, that you can find on altafsir.com for chapter 22, ayah 52 in the live chat. So Muhammad actually bowed down and worshipped different God. So commandment number one, commandment number two already been broken by Muhammad. As we showed you. And not only that. Like we said also Muhammad bowed down and kissed the black stones. And the messenger of Allah said. This is from Jama'a Tirmidhi. It's a Hassan good hadith. The messenger of Allah said. The black stone descended from the paradise. And was more white than milk. Then it was blackened by the sins of the children of Adam. So the black stones guys could also suck the sins of the Muslims, right? This is why Muhammad also kissed the black stones and touched the Yemeni corner of the Kaaba. So <laughs> Muhammad actually committed shirk, he committed blasphemy and he broke the first two commandments. Now commandment number three, you shall not misuse the name of the Lord your God. Now, did Muhammad actually do that? Did Muhammad misuse the name of the Lord God? Well, actually, yeah. When Muhammad claimed that Allah, Jibreel, all the angels and all the Muslims on earth will help him stop his two wives who were basically giving him a hard time. Why? Because you need to remember that when Muhammad was busted in the bed of Hafza, Hafza actually busted Muhammad sleeping around with Mary the Copt slave. She busted him and she went to Aisha and she told Aisha, right, about this incident. Because Hafza said, oh, Prophet, 
you're doing this, you're committing adultery on my day because, you know, Muhammad used to uh, have a day for all his wives, right? And that day was reserved for Hafza. And Hafza, when she came back home, she found Muhammad in the bed, in her bed, uh, with Mary the Copt slave. So here Muhammad committed adultery in the bed of Hafza, and he was busted by Hafza and Aish, and they gave them gave him really a bad or basically a hard time. And Muhammad actually said to them, I will not stop doing it. Right? And then all of a sudden this ayah came down. Chapter 66, ayah 4 from Surah At-Tahrim. If you two wives repent to Allah, so Hafza and Aisha, if you repent to Allah, it is best for your hearts to have deviated. But if you cooperate against him, Muhammad, then indeed Allah is his protector and Jibreel and the righteous of the believers who are the Muslims and all the angels moreover are his assistants. So here Muhammad actually tried to fix <laughs> him being busted, having sexual intercourse behind the back of his wife Hafza, committing adultery and he uses Allah to help him out and not only Allah even Jibreel right to protect him I mean these two women are let's say let's say they are very small women he needs all the help from Allah the angels and all the righteous people to help him out against two poor women so here Muhammad actually did use or misuse the name of his Lord, right, for his own benefit. Number four, you shall remember and keep the Sabbath day holy. Now did Muhammad do that? Did he kept the Sabbath day holy? No, he changed the most important day to Friday in Islam, right? And actually, on that same day, that he chose the Friday Adam was created and on that same day on Friday Adam sinned in Islam so you know how can you make that a holy day when the first of mankind Adam in Islam actually committed sin on that day right so Muhammad is having a nice cake and he wants to eat it too so he changed the Sabbath to Friday. So he also broke number four. Respect your father and your mother. Did Muhammad actually respect his father and mother? I went to the website, to this website, islamqna.info. And from this sheikh, Sheikh Muhammad Saleh al munajjid he is the sheikh of this website who is answering questions of Muslims. And one of the Muslims actually asked this sheikh a question. And he asked him the question, where are the parents of Muhammad? Actually, Muhammad called his father Najis. From Sahih Muslim, hadith number 203, narrated from Anas, that a man said, O oh, Messenger of Allah, where is my father? Muhammad said, the Prophet of Islam said, in hell, your father is in hell. So the poor guy's father was in hell. Why? Because he died in the pre-Islamic time or period. So he did not accept Islam. This is why he's burning in hell. He was a Najis. Remember, chapter 9, ayah 28. The mushrikun are najis. The mushrikun are filthy. They are dirty. So this is why he's burning in hellfire. When he turned, so when Muhammad turned, let us continue. He called him back and said, My father and your father are in hellfire. So not only the poor man's father is in hellfire, also the father of Muhammad, Abdullah. Did you catch it, guys? So both their fathers are in hellfire. And like I said, chapter 9, ayah 28, 
it says the mushrikun are najis. This is why they should not approach Masjid al-Haram, which is in Mecca. This is why till today, non-Muslims are not allowed to approach Mecca in any way, shape or form. Because we will make Mecca dirty because we are najis. So, did Muhammad actually respect his father and mother? No. And from another hadith, we also, you can go and find it. You will see that according to the hadith, Muhammad tried to ask forgiveness for his mother Amina too. But she was also a najis, right? And Allah did not forgive her. So she also is burning in hellfire like Abdullah, the father of Muhammad. And as you see, the proof is in front of you. Now, did he respect his parents? No. He called them najis. Innam al mashrikun najis. Right? They are najis. So we <laughs> refuted him on command number, commandment number five. So Muhammad also broke commandment number five. Number six, you must not commit murder. Well, wait a second. Muhammad actually did a lot of that. A lot of that. Do you remember the story about uh, the Bani Qurayza? How Muhammad cut off the heads of at least 900 Jews? Other sources even say more than that. But let us be political correct. Let's say around 900 Jewish men. He killed even people who criticized him, right? He criticized, uh, the people who criticized him. What about uh, Um Qurfa, the old Jewish lady? Was she Jewish? I'm not sure. If she, I think she was Jewish. But anyway, he tied her, uh, both her legs with ropes. And he, one of her legs was bound to... Uh, let's say the right uh, leg was bound to a, an, a camel and the other leg to another camel and both camels went in different separate ways and the woman, the poor lady who was around let's say 80, between 80 and 120 years she was split in half so even the people who criticized Muhammad Muhammad did not spare them and he actually committed a lot of murder with his homeboys who we call the Sahaba, the companions of Muhammad. So he did a lot of killing and the Sahaba were nothing but bloodthirsty monsters, right? Even after his death, he, they attacked countries like Egypt, countries like Yemen, countries like Syria, Iraq, and so on and so on, right? The Muslims even reached all the way to north, Sp north of Spain, right? They almost conquered complete Spain. Number seven, you must not commit adultery. Well, as we mentioned earlier, Muhammad was busted by his, by his um, wife Hafza in her bed on her day, having sexual intercourse behind her back with marry the Copt slave, the Coptic slave, right? Maria al Coptia. And what about his wife's son, right? Remember the story when Muhammad want, went to see his son, Zayd? Zayd, the son of Muhammad? Zayd ibn Muhammad? He found, instead, he found uh, Zainab bint Jahsh, his daughter-in-law, and he saw her in a very um, naked way, right? And immediately his heart started to jump around for her, right? Subhan qalib al qulub, right? That's what he said. Glory to Allah who turns hearts. That's what he said when he saw her naked body. The naked body of his daughter-in-law. I kid you not. And when Zayd ibn Thabit heard about it, he immediately divorced his wife and Muhammad took her for himself. 
Is this a prophet of God, Muslims? I mean, think, think, guys, think. Can this be the greatest of all the prophets? Certainly not. Number eight, you must not steal. Well, Muhammad stole a lot, right? He stole all the stories that he could find and he implemented them inside the Quran. He stole from here, he stole from there, he borrowed from here, he borrowed from there. He stole from Jewish legend stories, right? Like um, the flying carpet, right? The flying carpet of Solomon. What about the money that he stole? What about the red underwear that he was accused of, that he stole, right? Actually, Muslims accused him of stealing. I kid you not. And what about the caravans that he attacked? The pagan Meccan caravans of the pagans, right? He attacked them with his army of thugs that he calls the Sahaba. He attacked the caravans and he stole all the goods and he kept all the goods for himself. This is how he could afford himself a bigger and bigger and bigger army. And this is how he could become strong. And from that moment on, he started to expel the Jews. And he then later, he attacked Mecca and conquered Mecca. So Muhammad did a lot of killing. Muhammad did a lot of stealing. Number nine, you must not give false evidence against your neighbor. Did Muhammad do that, guys? Let me ask this question to our dear listeners in the chat. Did Muhammad give false evidence against his neighbor? Anyone? Let's see if you have the answer. Anyone in the live chat? Did Muhammad give false evidence against his neighbor? Let's see if you can answer this question for me, guys. Yes, Enoch says yes. Okay. Can you give me an example, guys? Let's see if you can help me out here. What kind of false evidence did Muhammad give? He lied. Subi says he lied about the Bible. Tamar says yes. Muhammad lied about the Bible. Yeah, you're very close actually. Muhammad, he said that Jesus is one of the greatest prophets, right? What did Muhammad do? He actually lied regarding the divinity of Jesus that he calls his follow, fellow prophet, right? He calls Jesus his fellow prophet. And he rejects the divinity of Christ and he also rejects the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Remember? Chapter 4, Ayah 157, Surat and nisa and they are saying, indeed, we have killed the Messiah, Jesus, the son of Mary. Who are saying that? The, the Jews, right? The Israelites. Indeed, we have killed the Messiah. Now, first of all, Muhammad is lying about the Jews. The Jews never said we killed the Messiah. Because the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. How can they say we killed the Messiah? That doesn't make sense, right? So here, Muhammad, did he not only lie about Jesus, he also lied about the Israelites. He lied about the Jews because the Jews are still waiting for the Messiah. So how can they claim they killed the Messiah? They actually did not believe that Jesus was the Messiah, right? 
the Jews who rejected Jesus. So, and they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. So here, he completely rejects the death and crucifixion, right? He rejects both of them, and he contradicts the teaching of the Injil that actually is being confirmed by the Quran itself. Allah confirms, right? Musaddiqan bima yadehi, right? So Allah in the Quran confirms the Injil and the Torah, right? But then in the same time, Muhammad is trying to have a cake and eat it too. So here, on the other hand, he is confirming the Injil, the gospel, but he rejects the death and crucifixion of Jesus Christ, right? And the Jews were not the ones who killed Jesus. The Romans killed Jesus, right? The Romans put him on the cross because there's no Jew who actually crucified anyone. And they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. Well, the Jews did not crucify Jesus. Those were the Romans. It was a Roman punishment. And the Romans were the one in control. They were doing the crucifixion, right? So Muhammad, as you see in front of you, he lied about the Jews, he lied about Jesus, and he lied about the one who crucified him. The Romans crucified Jesus, not the Jews. Yes, the Jews, it was their um, wish to crucify Jesus, so that Jesus get crucified, but the ones who crucified him were not the Jews, because it says they did not kill him, nor did they crucify him. It was the Romans. And then he says, another was made to resemble him, and in these who differ, blah, 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 all the way to the... And they did not kill him for certain. So he completely rejects it. So as you see, Muhammad actually calls Jesus to be his fellow prophet, but in the same time, he completely contradicts his teaching, right? And he lies about Jesus and the other prophets. Number 10. You must not be envious of your neighbor's goods. You shall not be envious of his house, nor his wife, nor anything that belongs to your neighbor. You shall not covet, right? Well, Muhammad actually also break the last and the final commandment, number 10. How? Well, maybe you can answer it, guys. Maybe you can answer it for me. Can you tell me? Can you tell me how Muhammad broke the last commandment, guys? How did Muhammad break the last commandment? Let's see if you can help me out here. Let's see if you have the answer, guys. Centurion says he wanted the wife of his son. Yes, you're completely right. Not only that, Muhammad not only fell in love with the wife of his own son, Zayd ibn Muhammad, because don't forget at that time, his son Zayd was called Zayd, the son of Muhammad. He actually fell in love and when he saw the naked body of Zainab, right? Subhan qallib al qulub. Glory to the ones who turn hearts. Glory to Allah who turns the heart of man. So he, he blames even Allah who, <laughs> Lord of mercy. He, bl he blames his own Lord for causing him his heart to beat for Zainab, his daughter-in-law, right? And if we go to the chapter 33, ayah 50, from Surat Al-Ahzab, chapter 33, ayah 50, we can read that any believing and a believing woman, any believing woman, if she gives herself to Muhammad, if she wants to give herself to Muhammad, if the Prophet wishes to marry her, only for you, excluding the other believers. So according to this ayah, guys, if Muhammad 
sees a woman or a woman who is even married, I kid you not, even if she's married and he falls in love with her, her husband must divorce her and give her to, to the Prophet. I had a debate uh, a couple months ago on Paul Talk with a Muslim and I asked him a very honest question. I asked him, uh, I asked the Muslim, the Abdul, hey, if Muhammad, imagine if Muhammad would have been still alive now and he wants to have your wife, would you give her to Muhammad? He immediately, without hesitation, said, yes, I would divorce my wife and give her to Muhammad. What kind of religion is this, guys? That only the Prophet is allowed to marry even someone else's wife if he wants to have her. And this is excluding the other believers. So this is only for Muhammad. Only Muhammad has this advantage. No one else in Islam. So, any Muslim who wants to tell us that this is actually a prophet of God? And as we showed you today, guys, we went through all the Ten Commandments and Muhammad broke all ten of them. And we gave you the proof for that. So, we can conclude that Muhammad broke all the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses. And Muslims love to say, well, Muhammad is like Moses. They love to compare Muhammad with Moses. But Muhammad didn't, sorry, Moses didn't break those Ten Commandments. He actually respected the Ten Commandments. Right? You remember the story from the Bible, guys, when uh, Moses comes down with their first time with the Ten Commandments and he see the Israelites are celebrating and worshipping the calf when they made that calf out of gold. You remember that story? And he broke the Ten Commandments and God punished the, the ones who started to worship the calf. The very first commandment was broken and what did God do? God punished them, right? And then Moses had to go back and get the Ten Commandments for the second time, right? So imagine if it's a prophet. If we go to Deuteronomy 18.20. Let me go to Deuteronomy 18.20, guys. Deuteronomy 18.20 Bear with me guys, let me get it for you Guys, don't call me now yet Let me first finish the teaching then uh, You can call me So this is Deuteronomy 18.20 From the King James Version The KGB But the Prophet which shall presume to speak a word in my name, which I have not commanded him to speak, or that shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. Did you catch it? So if Muhammad actually lived in the time of Moses, Moses would have ordered his men to kill Muhammad by stoning him to death. So Muslims, you cannot have a cake and eat it too. You cannot say, Muhammad was a prophet like Moses because Moses would have ordered his men to kill Muhammad. This same Moses would have ordered his men to kill Muhammad. This is Deuteronomy 18:20. Right? Because Muslims love to go to chapter 18:18. 18, 18. But they don't want to talk about 1820, which are two verses after 1818, right? They love to force Muhammad inside the Old Testament, but they don't want to read the, ne the following two verses, right? In the chapter 1820. So Muhammad would have been ordered to be killed according to Deuteronomy 18 that you love to go to, to prove to us that Muhammad is mentioned there. So Moses would have not been friends with your Muhammad. So do not, do not, for the love of God, do not compare 
your fake prophet with Moses. So, if there are questions, guys, thank you for watching. By this, we can say that the teaching is finished. If you have any questions regarding today's teaching, you can call me as a Muslim. If you are a Muslim, please call me. If you are a Christian, please don't call me, right? Ask your questions in the text. But if you are a Muslim and you want to refute me, please. Oh, let us have a nice discussion to see if it's about this topic or not. I don't care, really. Carol, call me. Try to refute me. Is there any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? So, please, guys, if you love today's teaching and topic, uh, Muhammad broke all of 10 of them. Please download this video and don't forget to like this video, guys, and also subscribe to my YouTube channel. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim? Or do we have questions regarding this topic today? Do we have any Muslims? Did the did ultimate truth? Were you the one who just called me? I mean, last time you tried your luck with me. Yeah, I mean, guys, guys, if you're a if you're a donkey, would you uh, go with your head inside a wall? The next time you will know that it will cause you pay right so you know muslims don't learn and this ultimate truth always tries his luck out with us right let's see if this guy uh, will pick up Answer, man, answer. It's not answer. Hello. It's Rob. Hey, it's you, Ultimate Truth. How are you, Ultimate Truth? What? Did, what take you so long to pick up my phone, man? What's uh, going on? I think I think you have issues because I always say if I don't finish my teaching, don't call me. So you're the one who is not paying attention. But why did you call me, man? What's your What's your question? Do you have Do you want to share something with us? You said call me, but I've been listening to you from the beginning. You said, okay, anyone got a question? Yeah. And I called. Yeah, okay. So don't Do you have a question about today's topic? Oh, yeah. Okay. You're about the Ten Commandments, right? First one, you said, don't worship any other god but me. Yes, yes. Do you do you worship oh, other gods oh, than the god of the Bible? Hold on. Just, just hold on, man. Hold on. You said I got a question. You, you don't ask me questions. If you're asking me if I got a question, you let me ask my question. Okay, okay. You ask, 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 ask. Let's see. <laughs> Let's see what your amazing question is going to be. Now, I want to ask you, wh who was talking down there? Who was saying it? Who was asking the question? Who was saying, don't worship anybody but me? The, the First me of all, it's not a question. So what are you talking about? I said, he said, don't worship anybody else but me. Yeah. Is this a question? Is this a question? I said, who was talking? What's his name? It's God of the Old Testament, right? Does he have a name? Yes, I am that I am. I am that I am that uh, that's the name. So it's not uh, it's not Yahweh. It's it is Yahweh. Oh, so is it uh, is it Jesus? Yes. Hold on. Is it I am uh, uh, that I am, or is it Yahweh, or is it Jesus? It's come on, man. Pick up your uh, make no, make okay. your mind up. Can you tell me uh, what the God is of the Christians? I'm asking you a question. Don't ask me questions. Okay. Well, what what do Christians believe? What do I'm Christians you, believe in? Is Who is our God? Who is the God that we worship? The Father, <laughs> the Son, and the Holy Spirit, right? 
don't ask me questions. I am the one asking questions. Well, you cannot Please. answer. Clearly, you cannot answer. I'm answering. Yes. You are not paying attention. Our God is the Father, <laughs> the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is one. Okay, so, so what are you saying? Uh, what are you saying? Yahweh is a God. Jesus is the Holy Spirit. What? Abdul, uh, Abdul, the, Abdul, Abdul, Abdul. Listen, listen. Yahweh. Tell me the name Yahweh, of your God. Please. Our God's name is Yehovah. Yahweh. So. Yehovah. Yeah. So Yahweh is your God. So yes. so it's not Jesus. So it's not yes, Jesus. Yes, it's the same Jesus. Have you read John one one? Yes, yeah, John one one says. What does it say? In the beginning was the word. Yes. The word. In the beginning was the word, the word was with God, and the word became God, right? Okay. Was God, not so, became God. Was God. Don't misquote my Bible, okay? I don't do that uh, with your Quran. Okay. If okay. He, okay, now if it says in the beginning was the word, how can be how can the word be in the beginning? The word had to be said by somebody else. No, because do, because that a, word that was that, word was not made. It is eternal. Like the Quran says if you say Jesus is Kalimat Allah and the Kalima if you say in is the eternal. Beginning was the word, yeah, with God, right? And the word the is kalima, God. Allah had to be there. Allah had to be there to say the Kalima. But how can it be the word if there is nobody saying the word? The word cannot be in the beginning. No way. You get it all wrong. No, 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 Abdul. No, no, no. If you go to the very first chapter of the Bible. Wait, wait. No, no, no. You listen. You listen. Listen. You are asking me a question. Let me address you. I said, if nobody is talking, how can you hear something? Who, who, the word, who is, is the word is talking. Who is, the, who is talking in the Bible, Abdul? If no one is talking. Who is the one talking in the beginning in, of, of Genesis? In the beginning of the word, in the beginning, you said. In the beginning, it cannot be the word. It had to be God in the beginning. And then God said the word. And then the word be, become flesh. Okay, okay. But the word cannot be become... Be, uh, Abdul, before. listen, 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 listen. Is, is the word let me let me turn let me turn the tables let me turn the tables for you is is kalimat allah that you call the quran is it created kalimat allah is from allah so in the, is in the it beginning was is allah, it created is it created is the quran created which is the kalimat allah is it created it's allah word so is it created answer the question Listen. abdul is is the is the quran created is the speech of Allah created? The, the, the speech of Allah is not created. The, Thank the you very much. Allah. Thank you. Allah. Guys, did you hear it? Did you hear it? The speech of Allah, the kalimat Allah is not created. Since Jesus in the Quran is kalimat Allah, then Jesus is not created. He is eternal, the word of Allah. But you said this, you said Guys, the did you hear it? Did you hear it? You said, Abdul, you Abdul, said Abdul, 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 just go, just go, just go. Guys, did you hear it? He just called Jesus God and eternal. It's Jesus is Kalimat Allah. He is the Word of God. He is uncreated and eternal. Thank you very much, Abdul. Thank you very much. You see how easy it is? Don't call me, Abdul. Don't call me. Don't call me. Don't call me. Enough is enough. He, he is the one calling Jesus the uncreated Word of God. So, basically, Muhammad... Muhammad stole from John 1 1, right? When he said that Jesus is Kalimat Allah. Right? In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and that same Word is God. You see how he also misquoted the first verse, guys? He's, he even misquoted it. Why? To fit his own agenda. It's, it's not going to work with me, my friend, right? And if you go to chapter 4, Ayah 171, you will see that Jesus is the Kalima of Allah, right? Let me show you. Let me show you. Chapter 4, Surah An Nisa, Ayah 171. And his word, you see, Jesus, the son of Mary, was but a messenger of Allah, and his word.
The word of who? Of Allah. Kalimat Allah. Wa kalimatuhu. See that? He is not only the messenger, he is also kalimat Allah. The eternal word of Allah. Did you see it guys? So Muhammad stole this from John 1.1. He stole that from that verse. See? So when Muhammad stole it, he actually busted himself. Guys, look how easy it is to bust a Muslim. I only had to listen to what he had to say. And I turned him against, I turned his own claim against him. Just listen to what they have to say. And use it against them in the court of law. That's how easy it is expose this satanic cult and the followers of this satanic cult. So ultimate truth you will never learn because even donkeys won't go with their head inside the wall because it will cause them pain. But you keep calling us because you love to get spanked and busted every time. This is why he loves to call Christian Prince. This is why he loves to call me. So from his own mouth as you heard Kalimat Allah is uncreated, eternal, so that makes Jesus the eternal word of God, and that word is God, and that word was God, and verse 14, and that same word, that word was made flesh and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of who? Of Jesus, the word that became flesh. So Muhammad spanked himself, the prophet of Islam, the fake prophet of Islam, he copied this from the Injil and he even busted himself. You know, Muslims, man. Muslims, if you really care about the truth, I advise you to drop Islam, drop the fake prophet of Islam and come back home. Please accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Glory to his name. Right? Muhammad asked Allah to forgive his mother. Allah didn't want to listen. Muhammad didn't know what Allah would have done to him. Even Abu Bakr, he says, even with one foot in Jannah, I still fear the deception of Allah. So imagine if you are the first caliph, and you are not certain what Allah would do to him, do to you, because the, Allah is the best of deceivers. Allah khairul makarin. He is the best of deceivers. Right? Ultimate truth actually thought he had a strong case against me. Right? Did you see how easy it is to show him that Jesus is the eternal Word of God? If you know, he didn't even know what uh, that Jesus is Yahweh, right? This is why I asked him, Who is God of the Christians? He didn't want to answer right? because he knew he was busted. Yahweh is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, who is the one speaking in Genesis. Right? And everything is created through the word, right? As the Bible says. Everything is created through him and by him. And Jesus actually owns everything if you go to the Bible. He was given authority over everything. But let, let me show you. Uh, I believe it's, it's in John 16, if I'm not mistaken, let me just... <laughs> You know, because Muslims love to go to John to prove to us that Muhammad is the Holy Spirit. 
But that's blasphemy, right? Because the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, is God himself. So when Muslims love to go to John 14 or uh, any verse from the Injil. Okay. Uh, yeah, this is it. I found it for you guys. Just a second. This is John 16. Uh, verse okay so here is talking about the spirit of truth it's come he will guide you into all he will not speak of himself but wh wherever he shall hear that shall he speak and he will show you things to come he shall glorify me here is Jesus speaking who shall he glorify Jesus so here Jesus is calling himself God glory to him right for he shall receive of mine and shall show it unto you. All things that the Father had are mine. So everything that God the Father owns are owned by Jesus Christ. Therefore said I that he shall take of mine and shall show it unto you. See it? So everything that is owned by the Father is also of the Son. You see? See how easy it is to show you that Jesus, the Son, and the Father share the same authority over all things. So who is Yahweh? It's the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, as we showed you. Let's see if we can get a question from the text. Guys, please don't mock uh, ultimate truth more than he already mocked himself. No? Please be respectful, guys. There is no need to insult Muslims. Because, don't forget, Muslims are the ones who are in need. They are the ones who are in, in this dark cult. We don't do this, guys, to win debates. Right? We don't do this for ourselves. We do this only for the truth. And only the truth will set us all free. And who is the truth? It's Jesus. Jesus is the truth. The way and life. He is the one who gives life. He is Al Tariq. He is Al Hayat. Al Haq. Guys, by the way, Al Haq is even one of the 99 names, which means the truth. It's one of the 99 names of Allah. So if Allah is Al Haq, He is the truth, then Jesus must be Allah. In his there's no need. To, uh, there's no need to call me again. Uh, the truth, ultimate truth. Why did you? Why do you call me? Why do you call me? You want to try out? Why? Your why don't you? Why, why don't you stop your cowardness, what, man? What? Yeah. Co what cowardness, man? You are the coward. You, you are. You are you asking me. You are I, asking I, me. Listen, listen. You are asking me. Listen. You are asking me who Jesus is. You do. You have no clue who Jesus in the Bible is. I asked you who is Jesus. You can't even That's answer me. You. You That's don't know the difference. You don't. You don't know the difference. Who our God is? Who is our God of the Bible? You're you asking me, is Jesus in your bed? You gave me three names. You said Yahweh. You said uh, I am who I am. You said Jesus. Yes. I'm asking you which one is your real God. But I know those three are different. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit the Jews, are one God. I know, I know the Jews does not do not consider Jesus as God. I know that for fact. I know the really? Jews are Jews. Really, really, really. Is oh, that true? What? Was, uh, I know was, that. was Matthew a Jew? Was Paul a Jew? I said. Uh, no, no, no. Jew. You made a claim. You made a claim. Was Matthew a Jew? Was Jew. Peter, Simon Peter a Jew? Was Paul a Jew? Uh, Matthew was, uh, uh, was a Jew. Uh, John was a Jew. But Thank they you. Never Jesus Thank God. you. See, Matthew, see, see how easy it is to spank you. Why, why, are you why are you lying? Why are you lying? You said, you said the Jews did not oh, accept him. Me. The Tell first me, Christians, man, Abdul, don't waste Tell my me. time. You know, don't don't waste my time. Don't waste. Me. The first Jews, sorry, the first Christians were Jews. Paul was a Jew. Matthew was a Jew. John was a Jew. What are you talking about? The Jews did not accept him. Thousands and thousands of Jews accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Right? This guy, you know, uh, didn't I tell you? A donkey will not. Go with his head inside the wall because he knows it will hurt him. But this guy doesn't learn. It's an insult to call him a donkey, guys. Maybe some people, you know, 
people like Christian prince, they call them donkeys. And actually donkey in the, in the Arabic is not even an insult. It means an ignorant one, right? I, uh, I debated Sheikh Ruhi before, guys. And I, I, de I debated him on a hadith where Muhammad is saying, if you uh, raise up your head before the Imam finishes his prayer, Allah will turn your head into a donkey and say hadith by the mouth of Muhammad. Right. So and he said, no, no, this is actually not uh, real. Uh, it's not, you know, he, he even lied about that. He said, no, this, this means they, were, they are ignorant. So according to the Sheikh, PhD Sheikh from Al Azhar University, a another synonym for ignorant is donkey. Right. But I don't need to call him a donkey, right? But he won't learn. A donkey would not go with his head inside the wall because it will cause him pain. But Muslims don't learn. This is why he keeps calling and this is why he keeps busted. And I, to be honest, I'm tired of this guy. If you want to, Muslims, if you want to learn who our God is, go read the Bible and you will learn who our God is. Right? Yeah, I, I debated Sheikh Ruhi twice, guys. Uh, and I recorded and I put it uh, between my other videos on YouTube. But I actually debated him much more than that. I debated him a couple of times, actually, on uh, Paul Talk. But at that time, I wasn't recording videos yet. Because I just basically started recording and doing live shows recently. I started like six months ago and I will say I made one mistake guys in the past and I didn't record my videos like CP used to do else I would have had thousands and thousands of videos by now but you know it's never late and as you see Muslims will try out their luck Any Muslim, any other Muslim who think, thinks he has the courage and the knowledge to call me? Hmm? Maybe you want to call me on this topic or not? Can you refute the fact and stay on topic as a Muslim? Refute the fact that your fake prophet broke all the Ten Commandments that were given to Moses? Huh? Uh, in the gear Veritas, I don't know, and I really don't care about if Sheikh Rohi is a is a real Sheikh or not. Well, he claims to be in Al Azhar PhD Sheikh. I really don't care if he's a Sheikh or not. Sheikh or no Sheikh, you'll get spanked anyway, right? Marcus Stembeck says, Rob did a great video on the ethics of Islam a while back. For any viewers, can I recommend his older videos? Robinson, thank you, my friend. I appreciate it. God bless you and your family. Do we have all, guys? If I'm not seeing your questions because of the Muslim who just called me, you know, and the text is really going fast. Sorry if I missed one of your questions. Please ask it again, and hopefully I will see it and try to answer it to you. Do we have any question, or do we have do we have any Muslim who? wants to call me do we have any questions red prophet i don't think he's a fake prophet sheikh Ruh is actually a uh, true sheikh i believe he's a true sheikh right I have to give him that. At least he has the courage to call us, right? And debate us. Sheikh or no Sheikh, you will get spanked anyway. Because you don't have the answers in Islam. We do in Christianity. Pretty cute. Since I'm doing a lot of blah blah, maybe you can call me and shut me up. Right? Maybe if you don't have the courage to call me, maybe we should. Uh, Go back in time and give Muhammad and the Sahaba a keyboard like you 
because you're nothing but a keyboard terrorist mocking in the text. Think uh, we should give Muhammad, your prophet, a keyboard too, because you Muslims became very soft after 1400 years. At least the Sahaba were bloodthirsty monsters who were killing everyone who were criticizing Muhammad. Right? Yeah, please download our videos, guys. Please share them on social media. You don't even need to ask me if uh, you are allowed to download this video. Download it. Maybe if you want to cut out a very important stuff that you like from the video. Uh, so cut the stuff that you like and upload it. Because the truth about this cult must go out. Uh, <clears throat> Marcus Tembeck is asking, Rob Christian, could you please explain to the viewers how Islam often tries to paint Christianity as paganism to deflect their own pagan roots and how to combat it? We see it often. Well, Marcus Tembeck, it's very easy. You need to understand that when Muhammad was without power, right, when he moved to Medina, he, he wanted to become friends with the Jews and the Christians, right? So this is why Muhammad, in the beginning, without having any power yet, he tried to reconcile with the Jews and the Christians. But he had no idea that the Jews and the Christians would turn uh, against him and reject him, right? So when he noticed that he, that he was being rejected by the Jews and the Christians, because they knew this guy is lying, right? He's a fake prophet. So when they rejected him and he became more powerful, he, he started to expel the Jews and the Christians. And later on, right, he forced Jizya on them. Right? And Muslims are quoting the ayahs in the Quran that came much later. Because in the Quran, in the beginning, in the Meccan ayahs, right, in, basically you can cut the Quran in half. In the beginning, Muhammad is having nice conversations in the Quran about us, right? The Jews, the Christians, and uh, the Sabians, we are believers, right? He is saying good stuff about our scripture, but later on, later on, we are mushrikun, right? And he's lying about us in the Quran saying that we worship our monks and our rabbis, which is a big lie. Show me one Christian who is worshipping his monk. What a shame. Muhammad became desperate and he needed to lie about the Christians. He needed to lie about the crucifixion of Jesus Christ. Right? As we showed you before. So any any Muslim? Is there any Muslim who likes to call us about today's topic or any topic? I don't really don't care if you want to go off topic. Any Muslim? Do we have any Muslim who has the courage and the knowledge to call me? No Muslims. Why? Are you out of Muslims again? <laughs> Where are the Muslims who... I mean, we have more than 1 billion Muslims in the world. And I'm sure there are Muslims watching us. They are watching this live stream. Are you telling me there are no Muslims left who can defend this satanic cult? You can defend your... Prophet that we showed you today that he broke all the Ten Commandments. We are out of Muslims in 2019. That's good. Free cute. Call me and show me where I'm lying. You liar. Yeah, Gzab ibn Gzab. Show me where I'm lying. Yeah, Gzab. Let's see who is the Gzab. Let me sh show us who is the liar. 
you know, talking chat and chat is cheap. And like I said, we should give the Sahaba a keyboard, right? We should go back in time. We should buy a time machine, time travel machine. Go back in time and we, sh we should give the Sahaba keyboards like you sitting behind your keyboard. Give them keyboards instead of swords, right? But you Muslims have become soft. You can't even defend Islam, right? You can't even answer one simple question. And you call me a gazab, a liar? Shame on you, yeah, gazab ibn gazab. Why do Muslims choose to follow a sinner as their perfect example? Well, in other words, um, you need to understand that most Muslims are simply ignorant. I, we always say Islam is nothing but a nation of ignorant, ignorance, right? So they don't have any clue about how Muhammad contradicted the true prophets. Muhammad contradicted all the prophets, right? So they don't understand, you know, they, they have no clue. They don't read, they don't read the Bible and put it besides the, the Quran to see that actually Muhammad contradicted all the teachings inside the Holy Bible. So it is said, this is why we are doing this, guys. This is why we did the topic uh, of today about the Ten Commandments and how Muhammad broke all ten of them. Uh, free cute, if you are afraid to call me, maybe you should call your mom. Maybe she can call me. Maybe your dad, if, uh, if he calls himself a man. Because you're nothing but a kid. Maybe your dad can call me. And if your dad has no courage, Maybe your Imam can call me. We are here. We are not running. We are here. You have my Skype ID. My Skype ID is Lear of Christian. Right? Call me. Show everyone that I'm a liar. Right? I mean, talk is cheap. Everyone can say, uh, call everyone a liar. But prove it. Prove it to everyone where I lied today. Show us. Talk is cheap, man. And actually, your prophet swore on the Torah. I forgot to mention this hadith, guys. This is from Sahih al-Bukhari. The Jews came to Allah's Messenger. By the way, this is Sahih al-Bukhari, hadith number 6841. Let me give you the link in the chat. Please bookmark this link because Muslims always love to say that the Torah is corrupted. The Torah of Allah is corrupted. But let's read if the Torah is corrupted. The Jews come to Allah's Messenger and mention to him that a man and a lady among them had committed illegal sexual intercourse. So a lady, a Jewish lady, committed illegal sexual intercourse. Allah's Messenger Muhammad said to them, what do you find in the Torah regarding the regime? Which means uh, stoning, stoning of an adulteress. They replied, we only disgrace and flog them with stripes. Abdullah bin Salim said to them, you have told a lie. The penalty of regim, of stoning, is the Torah. They brought the Torah, so the Torah was brought. So as you see, Muhammad had access to the Torah, and Muhammad opened it. One of them put his hand over the verse of regim, and read what was before it and after it. And Abdullah bin Salam said to them, lift up your hand, where he lifted it, there appeared the verse of regim, of stoning. So they said, O Muhammad, he has said the truth. The verse of Rajim is in it, Torah. Then Allah's Messenger, now watch. Then Allah's Messenger, Muhammad, ordered that the two persons guilty of illegal sexual intercourse be stoned to death. 
And so they were stoned, and I saw the man bending over the woman so as to protect her from stones. So as you see, Muhammad actually believed in the Torah, and he took the commandment from the Torah. Well, Muhammad, here's the million dollar question. Muhammad, if you believe in the Torah, and you cast judgment from the Torah, why do you, why do you, why do you, break the Ten Commandments of the Torah. Shouldn't you not be stoned by this guy, Moses himself, for breaking the first commandment? Like we said earlier, from Deuteronomy 18.20, if Muhammad lived in the time of Moses, Moses would have ordered his men to kill Muhammad by stoning. Any prophet, but the prophet, which shall presume to speak a word in my name, in the name of Jehovah, which I have not commanded him to speak, or it shall speak in the name of other gods, even that prophet shall die. So Moses would have ordered his men to kill Muhammad for not speaking in the name of the holy God of the Old Testament. Muhammad spoke of Allah. Jews do not believe in Allah. They reject Allah. Christians don't believe in Allah. They reject Allah. So you, your prophet, Muslims, would have been stoned by this guy, Moses, to death. Like Muhammad ordered the Jews to be stoned. Because they committed illegal sexual intercourse. So Muhammad would have been stoned to death by Moses for worshipping another god and speaking in the name of other god. So Muhammad broke the first commandment. Did you catch it guys? So Muslims, you want to have a cake and eat it too? It's on you. So never ever dare to compare your fake prophet with this great prophet Moses. Because Moses would have ordered Muhammad to be stoned to death. It's on you Muslims, either you're going to stay in Islam and follow this fake prophet of yours or you're going to accept the truth and only the truth will set you free. Come back home, leave this satanic dark cult you call Islam behind you, come back home because your prophet contradicted the early prophets like Moses and Moses like we said would have ordered your prophet to be killed by stoning. Jews would have run behind Muhammad and started to stone him. So never ever dare to mention Muhammad together with Moses because this guy would have ordered your prophet to be killed. You cannot have a cake Muslims and eat it too. It's on you. Come back home to Jesus. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad is false, a fake false prophet. Do we have any Muslim except this uh, big cute guy or ultimate truth who called earlier and got spanked? Do we have any Muslims who have the courage and the knowledge to call me? Guys, please don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe to my YouTube channel. And also click on the notification bell to get notifications when I go live or upload videos. Yeah, now the verse is saying Muhammad was possessed and suicidal. Does that sound like a prophet of God? Well, yeah, Nada, you're actually correct. Show us one prophet in the whole history of the true prophet who was a suicidal, who was demon possessed like Muhammad. Show us one. Just one. Don't give us ten. Show us just one. So we can agree with you. 
So I think we are out of Muslims, guys. And <clears throat> it seems there are not many questions anymore. So I think it's not uh, the day for Muslims to call me and end my career. So I want to thank everyone who just joined in, who were watching to our teaching. I hope it was a benefit for everyone. So I hope you took notes. Uh, if you uh, did not watch the teaching from the beginning, please watch it again and use our today's teaching to benefit from it, to learn from it. Use it in your debates with Muslims, guys. And we are not doing this, guys, to expose and mock Muslims. No, we are not doing this. We are doing this to expose the filth called Islam, the satanic code called Islam. I don't see the joy in uh, winning debates, to be honest with you. I'm not doing this to win debates. We are doing this for the truth. And we are showing you that Muslims, when they speak, everything they say will be used against them. God bless you too. God bless the admins. Thank you for your support, guys. I love you dearly. Jesus is Lord and Muhammad and Islam are false. Thank you for watching and see you again in the future. God bless you.